Hi, everyone. I'm Dave. And I'm Rob. Welcome to our Chipola fifth quarter podcast. Rob, what are you doing, man? Are you like, are you happy about something? Yeah, we won the Super Bowl, man. We did. Did you catch, who's that guy, the Packers, Aaron Rodgers, MVP? Yeah, congrats to him, but let's be realistic. Tom Brady gets the MVP of the Super Bowl. Fifth I'd say, one. Yeah, I'd say that's a whole lot nicer than winning MVP of the league. Hit. MVP of the Super Bowl is better. It was good. Wow. He gets, like, younger every year, Tom Brady. What a game. It's all that plant-based protein he takes. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> that ice cream, right? That does it, I think. Hey, hey that'll do the trick. <laughs> so, get us started, Rob. Wow. Oh, man, look, 31-9. to nine, I was very impressed with this game, and I think – uh, what Tampa Bay impressed me with the most is held them to three field goals, held Kansas City to three field goals. That is amazing. Uh, that four-man front doing an amazing job. Nadamik and Sue recording a sack. Uh, I believe a, a defensive end or two recorded a sack. Uh, no touchdowns, all field goals. Mahomes was having a tough night throwing the ball. Offense, you know, for Kansas City would move the ball downfield, but it just was not enough. I mean, they were they were having problems inside the red zone. You had Travis Kelsey dropping wide open passes. Uh, they were doubling up on Tyree Kill on defense, which I said this is what they were going to have to do. Uh, the secondary, our linebackers, you know, Shaquille uh, Barrett, uh, Levante David playing good football, safeties playing back. You know, most of the night uh, the Tampa Bay defense gave them a, a two-safety look, and it was hard for Mahomes to, to find somebody open. I think Tyree Kill may have had six targets the whole night. Uh, you know, there was like two or three times that he, he, he may have called a pass. Uh, but it, he just couldn't get it into the end zone, man. Kansas City, you know, I think the biggest problem for them going into that game uh, was probably the offensive line. You know, I said last week Eric Fisher was out at left tackle. They bring in the backup. They have to move him over to right tackle, bring in somebody off the bench at the left tackle position, and I think that four-man front really exploited that. So it's truly about the team. I, I just <clears throat> loved hearing the interview with Bruce Arians afterwards when they were talking about Brady this, Brady that which well-deserved. I mean, they wouldn't have made it this step this far without Tom Brady and his leadership. He mentioned how he always leads by focusing on the team and others. And it seems like that was key, that they were down a few times, they had a few missteps, and they came back. And each phase of the game, offense, defense, special teams, kind of pulled their weight. We were talking off-air about that sack that Brady had and just the kind of the, the whole team effort where we never saw him get touched again. And I was thinking, just watching as a you know observer, thinking about our podcast, if he got hit another time like that, that could be it. And um, they never touched him again. What a team effort! Oh yeah, and and a lot of, of this game is mental. You know, Brady, I'm sure, as well as the coaching staff, was probably giving them an earful on the sideline. Uh, Mahomes, on the other hand, you know, recording two or three sacks, that really affects uh, a QB's mentality. Do you remember, I want to say it was the 98 draft, you know, Tom Brady, we all remember he went six round, pick 199. Uh, he had a bunch of quarterbacks taken over him. Giovanni Carmazzi uh, was taken over him to the 49ers, and, and Brady really Is that a car? What is that? Uh, Giovanni Carmazzi was a quarterback. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, sounds like a car. Uh, but Giovanni Carmazzi gets picked – over him, you know, he was a quarterback at Hofstra back in the late 90s. He was very mobile. One double A, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, but but everybody was looking. Steve Mariucci was the head coach, you know, with San Francisco at the time. And he was looking at, you know, a lot of uh, Carmazzi's size. Uh, he could run with the football. Brady couldn't really run with the football. He could, you know, he was decent at throwing it at the time and all this other stuff. Carmazzi, you know, gets on the field. You know, it's the, it's the first game, their rookie season. Brady's playing with the Patriots, obviously. Carmazzi with the 49ers. Takes the field. Carmazzi's first drive, he goes three and out, you know, gets gets wham-bammed a couple of times by the defense, and it really affects his psyche. He ended up, uh, I think it was three seasons later, he gets cut. Uh, you know, I don't even think he, he finished those seasons with 500 yards passing. Yeah, Brady, wow. You would think, uh, I mean, others would do their homework like Belichick and them did. Uh, to actually have, need a backup for Drew Bledsoe, I think, right, with the uh, with the Pats then. Um, looking at him, even though he's sixth round, he's playing with University of Michigan. So that is a powerhouse football team, and they're winning games. So yeah. it's amazing that people wouldn't see him as a traditional big quarterback. The guy's, what, 6'5", 6'6". Six, six. He's a yeah. big man. And, um, yeah, he just fits into that old-style quarterback where don't touch him and he'll tear you up. All right, well, he, here's here's something to, to kind of put to rest because there was a lot of critics, you know, even people that weren't Kansas City fans, saying, oh, this game is rigged towards Tom Brady. Here's the deal. This team finished 7-9 and nine with the same offensive weapons with the exception of maybe two or three last season. 
Uh, then Tom Brady comes to town and finish the regular season 11 and 5. You can't sit here and tell me he's not the difference maker in this team. Tom Brady's mentality is contagious. You know, he's the kind of guy that's in the locker room saying, hey, we may be down three touchdowns, but we can still win this game. And I think he was the difference maker, you know, in the Super Bowl because Tampa Bay come out on offense. I'm not going to lie, first couple of drives, two or three drives, we were a little shaky. You know, we went three and out, ended up having to punt, but defense stepped up time and time again and bailed us out. You know, Brady finished in the Super Bowl with with 201 passing yards, which is, you know, that's it's not necessarily something to jump and shout about. But for the Super Bowl, finishing with 200 pass yards against, you know, one of the best teams in the AFC, that's something to smile about. Yeah, we talk about these principles that apply to our bachelor's programs here at Chipola College. So the thought of leadership, Bruce Arians after the game said, some are saying Brady put a lot of hype on him as a Packers fan. Also like the Bucks, you know, it's kind of sad in their playoff game, you know, working their way to the championship. But his leadership was key, and Bruce Arians say that, said this team was everything. We had every player in place that we needed. We just didn't know how to win. And so Brady brought that in leadership, had a step up at the quarterback position, and demonstrated that consistency of winning because it's not just something you do one time. It's something you do all the time. In the locker room, as you noted, on the practice field, everything you do, watching film. And he's the first one in. Can you imagine at 5 in the morning? Eating grass? What kind of life is that? But I guess <laughs> when you have seven rings, oh, yeah, look at this ring we got here. Yeah. We'll show our audience. Yeah, this is what number seven maybe looks like. It does say Super Bowl 50 on it, right, or 55? Yeah, 55. 55, that's yes, 55. Yeah. i got to break out my uh, Roman numeral calculator there. But, <laughs> yeah, so way to go, Tom Brady. Oh, Pretty yeah, cool. absolutely. Yeah. Congratulations to Tampa Bay. That's the second Super Bowl in franchise uh, history. And, and we move on to the next big subject because this is what I want to talk about. Brady said – post-game interview, he says, I'm definitely coming back. Of course, Rob Gronkowski says, hey, I'm coming back next year too. As long as Tom's here, I'm coming back to this team. And now here's the question. Can Tampa Bay keep this team intact, offense and defense, and repeat next year? So here's the deal. You've got several. Are you opening this up for discussion? Yeah, oh, let, yeah, let, let's, yeah keep it yeah, going. Let, let's, let's tread uncharted waters here. Let's open this up for discussion. Here is who is up for free agency. If we can re-sign them, that's great. If not, they're going to walk, and another team's going to pick them up. So, number one, Levante David. Uh, key linebacker, you know, he, he's probably been in the league probably 10-plus years, um, and he's probably played his, his best football this past season. He's, he's a very key guy for our defense. And, and I said this before, it is almost uh, disastrous for us to get rid of any guys on that defensive side of the ball. Keep them however you have to. Mike Evans, you know, wide receiver, went to the coaching staff, you know, a couple days ago, says, if you have to take some of my money that you were going to use on my contract, take it so we can keep this team together and run it back again next year. Wow. Um, so you look at some others. Gronk, Gronkowski, he might retire. You know, what's going to happen with him? I'm sure Brady can have some influence over him. And then a couple of the receivers, aren't some of those up? For yep. yeah. uh, speaking of, Chris Godwin, he's another one. Uh, you know, he finished two or three seasons – as consecutively 1,000 yards. You know, he finished, you know, two or three seasons like that. So he's been kind of key. He didn't really get involved much in the passing game for the Super Bowl. Uh, there's a good chance Chris Godwin might walk. If that does, that'll free up some cap space to maybe bring, you know, one or two players in. I know Adrian Peterson, you know, we know old Adrian Peterson with the Vikings, Redskins, you know, he's kind of been all over with the Lions. Uh, and everything, you know, he made the comment that he'd love to come to Tampa, sign with Tampa, try to make a Super Bowl run with Brady. I don't know if that's going to happen. Well, he definitely would make a difference. You let him rest, you know, a, a, a series off and on. He, he could definitely move the ball. Oh, no doubt, no doubt. Uh, you got outside linebacker Shaq Barrett's coming up for free agency. Uh, and some of these guys are target. You know, if Tampa Bay wants to have the same success next season and improve that they had this past season, they're going to have to sign a lot of the players on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, Gronk is coming up for renewal. You know, they signed him to a one-year deal. Uh, I'm sure they'll figure out a way to keep him. Uh, uh, next is Nadama and Sue, defensive Wow, player. a couple yeah. of big sacks. Oh, yeah, and, and you got to think, you know, we probably had the best defense in the league last year, hands down, bar none. Uh, that's just my personal opinion. And a lot of these guys are now coming up for renewal on their contracts. If they don't, they're going to walk. You know, the cap space is already limited because they franchise tagged. Uh, I want to say they franchise tagged. Who was it? I want to say it was Nadama Kinsu or it was somebody else. They franchise tagged him. So that player is going to be looking for $15 million guaranteed each season. Don't know if Tampa Bay is going to be able to do that because the cap space, I'm told, is supposed to go down going into next season. So that's going to create some problems unless they can reach some sort of deal with their agents. Yeah, that franchise tag you would think would be a positive. It's good for the team typically initially because yeah. it takes a really good player and say, hey, we're committed to you. 
when the player's starting to think, hey, I deserve more money. So it kind of got Sue, who's one of the best. <clears throat> he was, I think, a first-round pick for sure out of college. The guy's a monster. Oh, absolutely. You know, played with Out of the, Nebraska, right? Yep, out of Nebraska. Plays with the Detroit Lions. Uh, that's where he got his start. Uh, went down, had a stint with the Miami Dolphins. Uh, and, you know, he, he even made the comment in an interview. He said, I'd love to stay and run it back. You know, a lot of these players, um, the good thing about it is it, it, it's a lot of players that's on the downhill side of their career and they're looking to make one last Super Bowl run. A lot of them, as I said in the last episode, they only came to Tampa because they wanted to make a run with Brady. It doesn't matter, how, you know, why they came to Tampa. What matters is they came to Tampa looking for a shot. They got their shot. They've won one Super Bowl ring. You know, here's hoping this team can do it again. Running back Leonard Fournette's coming up on a one-year deal. Uh, you know, a lot of these players are key. And I think what concerns me the most is I hope uh, that the Bucks front office can figure out a way to, to move around the numbers and get some of these guys back. Now, that backup running back, he did some uh, really Jones, good things. Oh, yeah. Ronald Jones II yeah. had his night. Very physical He guy. could carry it, I thought. A couple times he outperformed yeah. um, Leonard, I thought. Yeah, I think there was one play. It was a dive to the right. I don't know if you saw it. He was dragging two or three Kansas City Yeah, defenders. like nine yards or oh, something. Yeah. He's yeah. a very physical yeah. guy. Yeah, Antonio Brown's coming up for a one-year renewal. He's already stated he would like to come back. Um, you got Ryan Suckup, our kicker. Um, he's a pretty good guy. I'd like I'd like to see us keep him on. He's pretty consistent with extra points, uh, three-point position. Uh, LaShawn McCoy, uh, I could see us letting him go. You know, he played with the Chiefs last season when they went to the Super Bowl. Uh, didn't play a snap of football really then. Uh, he comes to Tampa Bay this past season, doesn't really pay, play – uh, any snaps with Tampa Bay wins two Super Bowl rings. <laughs> got to give a shout out to that guy because he's smart. Most certainly. Oh yeah. Then you got Steve McClendon. You remember Steve McClendon last season? We lost Vita Vea in Week Five um, against the Bears at Soldier Field to an ankle injury, put him out for the rest of the season. Uh, so somehow the Bucks front office finds a way to get defensive tackle from the Jets, Steve McClendon, to come down to Tampa. Uh, he Jets put, trying to rebuild, right? Oh, yeah, Jets win. trying to rebuild. Steve yeah. McClendon comes to Tampa, fills a much-needed roster spot. We get Vita Vea back in the NFC Championship, and it shows, you know, Tampa Bay has overcome a lot of obstacles uh, through this past season. And, you know, I think Brady was the difference maker. He had all that talent around him, brings two or three guys with him, uh, and they get it done. You know, haters going to hate, man. Everybody says, oh, you know, the game's rigged towards Brady. Say what you want to. But Brady could go to any team in the league, make them successful, and they'd probably still say it's rigged. It's about winning when you have the chance, right? And so he, this is his 10th tenth time at the big dance, and he's won seven of them. Seven of them. So that, that's unheard of. He has more passing yards in the Super Bowls than most people have in their career. Right. So uh, winning when you have the chance. Now looking at the receivers real quick, that number 15, do you recall who that is? Number 15, I believe that's uh, – that is it Chris Godwin I'm thinking of? But there's, I think it's number 15 that uh, Brady would hype up and say he has some of the best hands he's ever seen. But I noticed that he was dropping the ball a lot periodically through the playoffs and maybe through that run when they had a couple of losses. Yeah. And I was thinking, wow, is that Brady being a leader, noting, you know, kind of giving him some confidence, some mm -hmm. shout-out, and, and they all they all pitched in together. And you also mentioned, Rob, about, uh, you know, giving a one last run for the, the big game Super Bowl. And I think no matter where you're at in your career, if it, if it is on the tail end, the Super Bowl is it. That's probably the pinnacle of all sports. Maybe there's some international soccer events that could rival that. But just for viewership, for money spent, for advertising, Super Bowl is the game. And I just think think back to Dan Marino, right, his rookie year out of Pittsburgh. And he's in the Super Bowl. He loses. The team looks great. 18 seasons, never made it back. So making it and winning it and trying to get another run, they need to keep the team together. Oh, absolutely. And I, I think the keys – uh, to, to keeping this team together is start on the defensive side of the ball. Find a way to move the numbers around. You've already got some selfless guys in that locker room at Tampa Bay that have already said, you know, I, I'll take a pay cut if, it, if that's what it takes to keep this team together going into next season so we can repeat. And I'm going to go ahead and make a bold prediction. If we keep this team together on the defensive side of the ball, you know, we, we may lose two or three offensive players, free up some cap space, but I, I believe we'll find suitable replacements in the draft. Uh, there's no question we don't make it back to the NFC Championship game next season, win it, and go back to the Super Bowl for a repeat. And this podcast has to be something that people watch, especially as football season begins to to ramp up in a couple of months. We'll start looking at the college season more and mm -hmm. kind of the, the off-season planning and, and looking at free agency and those who might get drafted. Thinking a couple of quick thoughts back to Tom Brady and all the haters out there. It's okay to have, to have views, and, and Tom Brady will laugh at himself. When he did that 40-yard dash, in that combine, right, to go into the, the pros. That was one of the worst 40-yard dashes. I think a really athletic person runs, you know, at that level, maybe quarterback, maybe a five, right, five-second 40 or something. 
Well, he was running like, I don't know, 5'8 or something. He guy yeah, looked yeah. really slow. Right. Anyways, they pick on him about that, that he's not the athlete. Uh, but it's an exciting time. People need to watch this podcast just to get the key info. We called it early that the Bucks were going to win, and I think your score was spot on. You gave too much love to Mahomes. You know, he was it wasn't his game. I think uh, you said 31 or something for him. It was 34-31 Bucks. I, I saw it being a close game, and, and, you know, I was actually surprised at the score. You know, we were up you know, 31 points at the half. And I remember thinking, you know, I'm not going to call it a game yet, you know, because my homes and – Oh, it and comes it, back all the time. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he, he's, he's a proven winner. Um, very tough to bring down and contain. But I think – uh, our defense stepped up when it needed to and contained Mahomes. You know, Mahomes got free. You know, he'd make five, ten-yard runs here, uh, make plays when he needed to. But it really it goes back to just the drop passes. The offensive line was not not doing real good. But my hat's off to Mahomes. He was a trooper. Matter of fact, even after the the game, Brady said, you know, keep your head up, man. You know, you're you're a great guy. You know, you're a good athlete. You know, and and I believe Mahomes will play in multiple Super Bowls to come. But I think for Kansas so City, is that the Dan Marino jinx you just gave him? Oh, I, I'm not gonna say the Dan Marino. Jinx. And that's another thing. Dan Marino, one of the greatest quarterbacks never to win a Super Bowl. Got to give credit where credit is due. Everybody remembers the fake spike. Uh, <laughs> zips it in there to, to Mark Ingram. Right. Uh, you know, everybody remembers that against the Jets, or at least I do. Um, and, and, you know, I think that Kansas City Chiefs team, you know, was something special. It obviously wasn't wasn't their Super Bowl title to win. Uh, but I do believe that, that in the years to come, Mahomes, barring that he stays healthy, uh, he'll find a way back, and, and that team will rally together. Now, as far as Tampa Bay, we're going to have to keep the team together on the defensive side of the ball. I don't see us changing a whole lot on the defensive side of the ball. Keep that team together. Find a way to keep Todd Bowles in Tampa. You know, he's he's been passed over for two or three head coaching jobs, but he's a very great coach, very great defensive coordinator. Uh, that defense shut them out in the Super Bowl. I mean, that, that's phenomenal. That's something to hang your hat on, put on a resume. Um, but we keep the defense, you know, going at Tampa, keep them all them guys together. You know, the offense will take care of itself. I don't see any reason why they don't repeat next year. Yeah, and, and lastly, Rob, just looking at the two teams about how that's important for leadership and good management and focusing on your team, that Brady and every player stepped up when they had to step up. If you look at Mahomes and the receivers and the, the, the highly specialized players on the field that are getting paid the big money, many of them, the ball hit them in the hands. And I remember, you know, we talk about Little League football and stuff. You were, Your coach taught you early. If you can touch it, you can catch it. So you're in the Super Bowl – these, there were people touching the balls, hitting them in the head, and they were they were dropping it. So there's no, you know, all things kind of happen, and many of them didn't think they were gonna get the ball because Mahomes getting you know tackled by three people or laying on his side, but he's still getting the ball to him. So it does take a team effort. Bucks showed that. What a great example for us as managers, leaders, and for football fans. And, and that's what it takes. It it takes going out there and. You know, when everything's on the line, it takes showing your team, hey, I'm in this with you guys. You know, let's finish it. You know, Brady goes down on that one sack early in the game. You know, he could have crumbled. He could have said no. It looked like he was about to. That right. was brutal. Right. But but here's the difference, Baker. The defense steps up when Mahomes takes the field. Tampa Bay defense comes out, puts the pressure on him. I think Mahomes maybe had anywhere from, from what, three, four seconds, maybe five seconds to throw the ball. That's not enough time to sit back in the pocket. You know, defense was bringing the pressure. Tyreek Hill was doubled up most of the game. You know, that they took him out of the equation – Travis Kelsey, you know, he called a few Doubled passes. Doubled up as well many times. Yeah, many times. But he, he was dropping open passes. There was a lot of passes that were overthrown. You know, Kansas City was just not playing their best football that night. So, wow. So, we have some exciting podcasts coming up. We'll be looking about uh, free agency, planning for the offseason. Where do some teams go? How are they going to manage their salary cap? So, we got some exciting podcasts coming up, Rob. And I look forward to sharing these with you. Absolutely, my friend. All right, give you a fist bump with the ring, man. Yep. All right. All right. See you.